Hello traders, it's July 29th, 2023. I'm Ricky Gaspard and I've done a lot of work over the last couple of weeks. That's why I haven't put a video out recently. But I've been working on this pullback strategy, fine tuning it making it way more accurate than the current one that you're seeing here on the screen. And I think I'm to a point now to where there isn't much more I can do to it other than to adjust a few parameters. And I've made that pretty much simple to do as well. So let's get started here. I'm going to start from the beginning so that you can get this black screen with not a lot of lines and crosses and X's on it. And the way I want you to do this, I'm not going to walk you through every click, but you can compare your screen to mine. So you want to start by clicking this gear icon here. And on my general tab, and you can pause the video on each screen and make sure that you only have the thing selected that I have selected. And the next tab is the price axis. I think I changed something here. The rest may already be the way yours is. The time axis. This is bars to the right so what that is is going to be this space well it's going to leave a space of five bars right here and then the favorite time frames this is where you add your different time frames so you would click here and if you want to add that tick that you've seen us trading through the pre-market live streams, you would add it here by clicking tick and selecting that. We're not going to do this at that time because this current indicator is not going to work with the tick chart. But you can keep the previous pullback set up. It works fine with the tick chart. And the reason I can't use this new pullback strategy is because it's based on volume and tick charts are based on orders. So these indicators are not based on volume other than the spikes. But the new indicators based on volume, spikes, and many other factors. So anyway, this is where you would set up your different times. And on the appearance, this is my appearance. I unchecked the grid. The background color, you select this color here, click on more, and this bottom corner is the darkest black you're going to get. And I don't think I changed anything else here. You can compare your screen to mine. On the equities tab, I Uncheck show volume sub subgraft. And I may have selected something here. I don't really recall. And you don't need the rest of these unless you want to change them yourself if your options are futures or Forex trader. And that's pretty much going to create this black screen. So the next thing you want to do is I want you to save your current setup. So Go up here to set up and save the workspace as whatever you want to name your current setup. Once you do that, click save and you'll always be able to go back to it by clicking this setup button and your current setup will be in here. So once you've saved it, let's go ahead and click on setup again. And let's save this workspace as a new name. I'm just going to call mine YouTube video. Maybe you want to call yours Pullback Volume 3 or V3. So this is not going to override the setup we just saved. It's just going to create a new setup with this new name. So I'm saving it. 
and we're going to go into studies and edit studies. And this is from the previous setup, so we're going to delete every one of them and apply it. So now you can see we have no indicators, we only have the candles. So the way to install this script, I didn't paste the script itself below the video. I did post only two shared links and that's all you need. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to click studies, edit studies. Well, you're going to have to do it differently. You're going to have to copy the link then go to setup and open shared item. You're going to hit control V to paste it into this box and then you're going to click preview and import. And you're going to do the same thing with the other shared link below the video, which is going to be that volume label. So for now, I'm going to cancel it and I'm just going to load these two indicators. And yours should already be loaded or if they're not, then you're going to do the same thing. You're going to look for that pullback indicator version three and you're going to put it over here. And you're going to look for the volume label. Let's see what it was called. Total buy sell volume. I believe that's it. Let me check. Yes, that was it. So this is going to load the whole whole setup for you. So it has the two moving averages already plotted. It has the buy arrows and it has the sell arrows. It's also going to load the bidding the ass label for you. And it's also going to load the spike indicator for you. And the second one you loaded is down here. I don't know if I have the right one loaded. It's looking like it's, it's the wrong one. So let me take that out of there and correct it. You find the correct one. Uh, buy and sell volume label. That's not it. Uh, what did I call it? Custom buy sell volume label. Let's try that one. Oh, that's not it either. I believe I found it. Yes, I did. So it's called the RG custom volume label. So you can take your mouse and move it right here and pull this all the way down. Give yourself more space. So now that we have the computer completely set up, go up here, set up, save the workspace as, and you can call this pullback Strategy Volume 3, or if it's already here, just save it now that you've got it all set up. I made the installation process much easier instead of loading a bunch of different indicators. I've included them all in this script. So I'm going to go over here to On Demand. I want to show you how we work this one. So this indicator is going to be programmable by you. And the way you do that is you click studies, edit studies, and here's the new, the new indicator, the volume three, and you click this arrow. And I put in all of the input boxes that you can adjust. You won't need to adjust the 50 or the multiplier, but here's the EMA by length is the eight moving average, which is the yellow. And the EMA cell, you can use the yellow if you want as well. So if, if the price goes above the yellow and, the, and it's spiking, then give me a buy arrow. Or if the price drops below the eight and it's spiking, give me a red arrow. 
So these are your moving averages. If you want to get out sooner, you could move this EMA length cell to a five moving averages so that the price crosses the moving average sooner. This is the volume percent threshold up. So this new script, it's not only looking for the price to cross above a moving average, it's also looking for this volume spike up here to be above normal. So if this spikes above whatever we set the percentage, this is 1% and 1%. So if it spikes up more than 1%, that's when you're going to get this arrow. If it doesn't spike up more than 1%, you're not going to get an arrow. So this is confirmation that, yes, it did cross the eight moving average. And it did spike. So it's moving up. And down here is this spread limit. This is nine cents. You can adjust this spread limit right here. And settings and so let's say for instance you set it to nine cents and the spread up here is 20 cents it's going to throw a red square up here with displaying the the spread number so if it turns red if you set the on if you say hey I'm not getting in a stock until it's lower than nine cents spread and it's higher than that nine cents it's going to turn red if it's nine or lower it's going to turn green of course this is not happening in on demand it's just just don't show up because it's not live but you can set everything here to tune fine tune it to your specifications like if i want the volume percent threshold down which would be a, a red and handle going down and I wanted to throw that arrow sooner, I could move this to 0 0.50, which would be a half a percent. Now, if I want some real confirmation, like I'm not worried if this candle spiked 1%, what if I want it to spike 2%? So we change this to 200, which would be 2%. And any any candle that didn't spike 2% is not going to have a, an arrow. You see, we got one here because it spiked more than 2%. And we had a point fifty, a point, a half a percent spike crossing the ADMA, which got us out. And it didn't put us back in for this short run because these weren't greater than 2%. So the way you're going to adjust this, let me see, we're on on demand. Let's go to uh, the 26th of July. Let's change the stock to XPEV. Let's reset the time. And I know a lot of you, you don't have the on demand working properly. And if I could help you fix it, I would, but I don't, I don't know your issues. so. There's no way I can help you. So I'm going to reset the time. Well, can't do that. I need to go back to the 26 and click go. Throw my screen over to where it needs to be. I'm going to pause it and I'm going to go set my parameters to what I like. So edit studies and you'll only have to do this once. So I want to buy if there's a 1% spike. I'm going to put it on 100 and I'm going to leave the sell percent spike to 5%. And if you look down here, you can also adjust your colors, the arrow down, the arrow up, and the colors of the EMA. You can change them if you want to change them. So now that I have my settings, I'm going to watch this stock. And I'm going to wait for a buy arrow here. And I'm going to buy this as, as the way I would buy it. So I would buy 800 shares of this stock so that I can make enough money from scalping. 
just to get into it once. I don't want to have to play two or three stocks a day. I want to make as much money as I can on the first one. And when you're buying this many shares, you want to keep your mouse on this sell button if something goes south over here. Chances are it's not going to. But with this new setup, you have to be really quick to get in when this turns around. Because it's only going to post that arrow if we get a volume spike, which will show up here, and the sellers turn around. So I've got my mouse. There's a green arrow. I click, and I'm in. And we're going to watch it. And I'll let you know up front, you can get out any time you want to get out. Any time you're in profit, get out. For the sake of this video, we're going to stay in and trust the indicator arrows. There's the two moving averages. This one is the 8. This one is the 21. And we're watching the candles. This is a nice spike. We got buyers in. We have a nice spike here. And this is a good scalp, it looks like. I'm still trusting the indicators. I don't see any red arrows anywhere. The price is far away from the EMA. There, there was a dip from, from sellers. We're at a high. The stock is still spiking, so we're not going to get a red arrow anywhere. I have this so fine-tuned, you wouldn't believe how accurate it is. I'm going to say we're at 8 out of 10 or a 9 out of 10 for accuracy on these arrows. I know that's kind of pushing the limits there. It could be 7, but I think it's higher than that but I'd be happy with seven even. So we're still bouncing up and down right here. We're on a one minute chart. Once we let this run for a few minutes, I'm gonna say 10 or 15 minutes because I'm gonna walk you through what we're doing, what it's doing. Right now, it's monitoring if this is a negative spike and is it big enough to where it needs to trigger a red arrow, and it must not be. This could even pull down way down to here and we not get a red arrow because it didn't trigger a sell signal. That was a pretty good drop, but I'm trusting the indicator. At this point, it's not my decision to get in or out. So you don't even have to really play this after hours to practice. You can just pull up your on demand and look back and see how the indicator performed back here. You don't have to sit here all day long and watch and see if it's accurate. It's already plotted its course back here. So you can pull up any stock, check it, see if it performed as it's supposed to, and then you'll know the accuracy of it. So it gave us another, another buy signal. It did pull back pretty strong from profit takers, but it must have not have been strong enough to throw a red arrow. And I even have it set to 0 0.50, which is a half a percent. So we're still rising. We're up in profit at $708. I'm trusting the arrows. The moving averages are pointing north. This is a good sign of strength.
We're going to continue to trust the arrows. This has nothing to do with me making a decision to get out. It told me when to get in. I'm going to wait for it to tell me to get out. And as I had mentioned in the beginning of the video, you could have got out right here. You don't have to trust these arrows, but that's how confident I want this indicator to be. I want to be able to trust the indicator and not my own thoughts. I'm good, but I'm not as good as to add all this math up that's being calculated by this indicator. I can't do that in my head as fast as this indicator can. Therefore, if I trust it, I don't lose as much money me making a wrong decision as to get out here. So we're up to $868 in just a matter of minutes by trusting the indicator. And you can try this on any stock in on demand. It doesn't have to be EX to EV. You can try NVIDIA, Microsoft, Amazon. It's going to perform the same way. It's going to do the mathematical calculations for you. So we had a flash of a red candle here. It did not tell me to get out. We're up to about 832, 816. And I know a lot of you can't buy 800 shares of a $17 stock. That This is just me trading. I just want to show you how scalping can pay off. You just, if you're confident in your indicator and you can buy a lot of shares right from the start, these are the kind of profits you're going to take. It's showing weakness, but it has not given me an arrow to get out. Moving averages are still pointing up. We're still pulling back a little. This is simply just a pullback. It's not a sell-off. So it looks like we're gaining momentum again. I'm just watching this label down here. I'm hoping we get another spike here, but the indicator is watching for spikes. If we had a spike down red, it's going to tell me to get out. Right now, it's having a battle between the buyers and the sellers. Looks like we're going to gain a little bit more profit. We're up to 881.44. Now 967. Now, do you get out here? You can if you want. I'm trusting the indicator. I'm not going to get out. I just want to show you what it can do. We did get a spike. Had we gotten out here, we would have lost a couple hundred dollars. We're up to $1,060. This would be my goal for today. I would sell and get out and I would be happy with this, but we're testing the indicator. This is my daily goal. I try to reach this every day. So had this been a real trade, I would have made my goal for today. <clears throat> Still trusting the indicator. We have a new high. We're up to 11.25. We're on a one-minute chart. 
This will also work on a five minute chart, a 15 minute chart. And if you watch the TD Ameritrade video yesterday, you'll notice he tested seven stocks and six of them were winners. All of them with a pretty high profit. That was a good confirmation for me that what I have done is right. If TD Ameritrade agrees with it, then something's got to be working. They're even going to put out another video on it. I don't know if they're going to use my script. I think they are. But they're going to test, create pullback strategy testing and see how many different ways it can be manipulated and see if they can raise the profit target on it. I don't think they can. The way they used it yesterday was a daily chart for a year. And over the year, only buying 100 stocks, six out of seven of those stocks were profitable. There was only one loss. I believe it was around 290. The other profits were 1,000, 1,600, 500, 200. And that was strictly green arrows and red arrows in the back test testing. So we still don't have a red arrow to get out. We did hit a high. We're still climbing. The indicators are still pointing north. We're up to $1,360, $1,328. Still going strong. This is why I don't calculate numbers in my head. Can't do it this fast. Before this indicator, I'd have probably sold the minute I saw this red or this red or this red. But I would have left a lot of money on the table had I done that. Still rising, got a new high, small red candle. We're at around $1,300. Trusting the indicator. Still put, putting out the green arrows. So let me show you a little setup while this is working. So we're at, I believe, 1% right now. So we're, we're getting arrows on a 1% spike. What if I wanted to make really sure that this was a strong run up? I could come in here under studies and edit studies and hit the gear icon. And I can move this up threshold to 200. So if I put it on 200, click OK and apply, it eliminated some of the green arrows. So it only posted on the 2% spikes or higher. This one wasn't. This one wasn't. That tells me this run is really strong. So let's say I move it to a 300 spike. So this would be 3%, apply and OK. We have even less arrows now. So we had 3% spikes down here. These were less than 3%, but they're still rising. So now we're up to $1,608 by trusting the indicator. Let's go back to our 100. So we can get our proper exit. Of course, this is our exit. It's at a half a percent. So we're not changing the exit. We want to get out as soon, fast as possible. You could even put this on 0, 0.0. So let's go back to our 1%, which is 100. 
Click OK and apply. And we're still in this stock and we're up to 1712. There's our 1% spike arrows. We're waiting on a red arrow to get out. So at 800 shares at $18, that's probably about uh, probably $16,000 investment. So we've made 10% of our money in return. It's two, well, now we're at $2,000 and it's still rising. It's still hitting new highs. We're still getting green arrows. This 8 EMA is really turning up north and so is the 21. The separation is a sign of strength. So we're looking good. We have some profit takers. Maybe this is our exit, I don't know. I'm going to hold it. Even if I lose money here, I'm going to hold it to the red arrow so that I know I got everything I could out of this stock. I held on as long as I could. I'm into, I'm using their money at this point. I'm in green. This is not negative for me. Just won't be as high a profit. But as I said, you can get out any time. You can get out anywhere up this ladder. And we just got a nice bump. We're up to 2151, 92, 2104, kind of bouncing up and down a little. Now we're up to $2,300, $4. So we're about 12% of our money, maybe 13. Now we're at 22.72, 22.98. We're holding on. We're letting the indicator do the mathematical calculations on spikes and volume. And you could get out here. We're at 25.44. You could get out here. 25, 26. This is without any fear of me wondering, hey, should I have gotten out here, 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 or here? Confirmation. We're at 22.40, kind of pulling back. You could get out here. So we're pulling back down to $2,000. Even if you took this loss and sold, you're still up $2,000. That's providing you could have bought 800 shares of this stock. So if you only bought 100 shares, you would be up about $200, $300, probably $300 up here at the high. So I'm not saying go out there and trust this indicator 100% until you've watched it during live market Watch how it operates during a live market. Take a day and don't trade. Watch it on different stocks for the whole day and see if you can build trust in it. Once you get comfortable and you know, hey, my shot is eight out of 10, I could click the button and lose my first one out of the eight out of 10 but the next six or seven will probably be positive. 
You're never going to be 100% accurate. But this indicator has a very high satisfaction rating. Still no red arrow. We're still bouncing around here. We're still up in the $2,000 range. It's actually still bullish. We have a bullish spike over here. We have buyers still buying. Maybe there's more to it. Or maybe not. So you could get out right here. It pulled back. It went back up. It gave you another chance to get out. Since this is pulling back and we're floating sideways, I would get ready on the sell button. If we get a red arrow here, I'll take whatever the market awarded me and be happy with it. There's the red arrow. I'm out. That's a $1,960 profit. I didn't get out here. I got out up here. I could have got out all the way up this, this rise, but I would have left a lot of money on the table. So it's very important for you to load this indicator. And don't forget you can, it, it's a wise idea. Each time you set up something new, save the workspace as something. And you can call, always come back up here and you can load whichever one you want to trade that day. See how accurate this is? Now we're pulling down. We're getting below the eight now. Does it have more in it? I don't know. I doubt it according to the numbers. So in the pre market live streams, we've been using the 133 tick chart. So I'm going to show you right here the 133 tick chart does not work. With this indicator. This indicator is using volume spikes and since we're on a tick chart it's counting orders not volume. So the indicator is not going to work on a tick chart. But what you can do is keep version 2 which you're using now, put it on tick and come up here and hit setup and save the workspace as 133 tick. So you can have your choice of coming up here and trading the tick, or you can select whichever this indicator was, whatever you named it, and play this indicator if you're gonna trade from one minute higher. So you can save many desktops up here. And always refer back to them in the list. So two indicators to load. Set up the black screen. If you want to trade the tick, just save it up here as a as a different setup, a different strategy. You can go in here and play with the parameters. So let's say you want to be a swing trader and you want the buy to cross the 21 EMA. All you have to do is type 21 right here and click apply. And you're going to get arrows on the 21. Whenever it crosses to 21, and you're going to get arrows on the spikes above that 21. And this would be a longer term trading. You could probably even go to five minutes. Cross to 21, you're in. It's rising, 15 minute. Same thing, cross to 21, it's rising, still going. 
Let's try the daily. The daily is this one bar. It gave you a green arrow when it opened this morning and it's rising. Down here, it crossed to 21 days ago. And it kept you all the way into the stock, all the way to here. So you can use this indicator whichever length of time you want to trade, except for the tick chart. So let me explain what a candle is to me. I promised I would do that. So if you look back here, this candle opened down. So actually it opened up. It opened green and it made it to this high. This wick is the sellers. So it opened green here, right where the top of this body is. And it came up to here and the sellers came in and they drove it all the way down to here. This little wick on the bottom is the buyers trying to push it back up. So if you look at this candle here, it was up to here for its high. This wick on the top is the sellers driving the stock down, but they couldn't drive it down past here, body of the candle. Down here is the buyers. So this is all buyers. If the sellers come in, you're going to see this body shrink and a wick appear on the top. And the further they drive it down, if they drive it past this point, it's going to turn red body. The buyers dominated this candle. There's barely a wick on either end, all buyers. This was very strong sellers to just wipe out the buyers. This candle opened higher then this one closed. That's a strong indication that it's going up. You can see the sellers coming in on the top wick. Just keep in mind, top wicks are sellers driving it down, bottom wicks are buyers trying to drive it up. So if you get a long wick on the top, get out. It's like this over here, because it may continue to do this. That's why nobody likes top wicks. And if we're buying, we all like to see long bottom wicks or no bottom wick at all. So follow the instructions in this video from the beginning. Get your black screen, set it up as itself, as, one, as a new setup. And load the two indicators. They're going to be below the video. And practice, practice, practice. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a blessed day.